Um, my name's Ian McNeil, I'm the Development Director here at Slytherin. Uh, well, we specialise in, um, in games that are based around history. Uh, it's what we know and what we do best. We've covered games that go through the ancient period, World War II, Napoleonic, um, and medieval was one of the periods we hadn't really looked at yet, so it was something that felt like a popular period with um, gamers that some, and something that we wanted to cover. And so when we started looking at the period, the Hundred Years' War seemed to stand out as something that um, would work in a game, so that's why we chose the period. Um, to be honest, there's nothing quite like Great Battles Medieval available on console at the moment. There are other RPGs out there, obviously, but there's nothing quite like this. With um, Great Battles Medieval, you have squads which travel with you through the game, and there's up to 16 of those. And each of those squads represents up to 32 men. So you can have around uh, six, 700 men with you, um, and these guys can all be personalised. And so this it's just on a scale. There's nothing been done on, on this scale before. And um, the combat model that we use is about uh, it's for fighting battles rather than fighting skirmishes between individual characters. So it has very different mechanics and rules. Yes, absolutely. Um, the game can be played on PC over LAN or internet, and on uh, PS3 and 360 through um, live and the PlayStation Network. Um, there are numerous ways to play multiplayer. You design your armies offline and there's a lot of fun in actually um, building your army. You choose whether you want to have knights uh, with lance, you equip them from the ground up, whether they're mounted, dismounted, what shields, what weapons, what skills. So there's a lot of fun in the army design and then in the battles themselves. The battles aren't all just head-on clashes. The battles can have objectives and missions. So you may have a mismatched army, you may have a small army versus a larger army. And the, um, the balance, the way it's made fair is that the larger army has to achieve a more difficult objective to win. So there's a lot of um, different ways to play and there's, um, there's a lot of multiplayer modes that we, uh, people can play with. This, this is what we do. Uh, we've been doing this for, for 10 years as a company um, in computer games, but also we develop tabletop systems. So we have a game system called Field of Glory, which is the most popular tabletop system out there at the moment for ancient and medieval warfare. And that experience lets us um, draw on all the mechanics and rules that make a battle feel real and put them into the computer game. In addition, we're working with um, the, the TV company that produces the Deadliest Warrior series, and they use our engine to replicate um, interactions between warriors from, from different periods. And so there's a lot of expertise um, there and a lot of re um, realism. Uh, yeah, we've done a huge amount of research into, into the battles. So, for example, um, at the Battle of Agincourt, there was um, a muddy hill that the, the French had to advance across. And this was one of the main reasons why they, um, why they lost the battle. They were advancing up a hill uh, in mud against the English archers. And we have the muddy field, and if, you, if the knights are moving through a muddy field, they move slowly and they're penalised in combat. And so we've got all these factors feeding in. So each of the battles has a little, a bit of flavour that reflects the, the reality of the, um, the historical events. There's a certain amount of information which is very easily um, available. So swords, axes, um, the equipment, that's relatively easy to research. Um, that's one part of the game, so you can customise your troops with various parts, types of armour, shields, weapons. In addition to that, you can customise all of your squads with um, uh, fighting skills. And some of these are fairly uh, more generic, things like um, swordsmanship and um, how to parry an attack. But some of these are more advanced, and these are taken from German fighting manuals, the medieval fighting manuals. Um, so they've been translated, and we've taken the skills out of those and used those in the game. So there's... Um, there's around a hundred different skills in the game, all kinds of um, very detailed and very advanced manoeuvres that they used to do. Well, the, the game model itself rewards realistic tactics. So by playing the game and becoming more successful at the game, you're learning the kind of tactics that a medieval commander would have learned um, at the time. 
For example, things like um, spear-armed infantry are good against cavalry. Um, infantry without shields are very vulnerable to archers. Uh, attacking somebody in the flank it demoralises them very quickly and they're likely to run away. Um, the morale of a unit is almost more important than its, its combat ability. If you make a unit's morale break and it runs away, it doesn't matter how well equipped they are, once they're routed, they're defeated. It's these rules and these mechanics that the player will learn from playing the game. And these are real historical things that happened, and so it will give them a, a basic understanding of how medieval combat would have worked. We work very closely with a, um, a specialist military history book publisher called Osprey and um, we work with them to make sure um, they, they supply us with books that have images of all the different troop types that are available and we model our characters based on those to make sure we're accurately recreating the, the types of characters that would have appeared at that period. As you move through the game we start off at the beginning of the Hundred Years War and um, the technology is different over the period of the over a hundred years obviously things have changed so at the start of the game you are your knights have lighter armor and um, certain types of weaponry as the the campaign develops and you move into the, um, the French campaign you the armor on your knights generally gets heavier and then gunpowder starts to come in so you start to get firearms and then uh, bombards and artillery so this also changes the tactics you use the uh, the development of firearms um, starts to negate the power of armor um, so uh, a bullet doesn't care whether you're armoured or not, it will pass through armour as easily it will pass through skin. One of the most important things is to look at the equipment your units have got. So um, there's, a, there's a real strength and weakness to every type of equipment you give. Spearmen are very good against cavalry, but they're, um, they're generally very poor against infantry. Archers are good against slow moving targets, um, they can hurt cavalry very badly but they tend to not get very many shots off before they hit them, so your archers really need to be screened by somebody who can protect them from the cavalry. Your swordsmen infantry are um, good against other infantry but weaker against cavalry. There's all this rock, rock paper, scissors um, interaction going on, so it's all about getting the right units in the right place against the right enemy units. In addition to that you've also got some more general mechanics. Things like outflanking the enemy, um, that always gives you bonuses when attacking in the flank or rear, and also concentration of force. One of the key parts to um, warfare through any period of history was concentrating your force against a, um, a small part of the opponent's army. So you do this by either delaying tactics on one wing whilst you concentrate on another, or just by um, quickly overwhelming individual units and then moving on to the next one. Absolutely. With Great Battles of Rome, um, there's a lot of uh, feedback on the forums. We've got a very ac active community and we're always listening to them to find ways to improve the games. And we actually have created an extra campaign for the PC version which you can download from the site, um, which was in reaction to some of the feedback we got. Uh, so there's a new bonus campaign available. Yes, there is. Um, each platform's got something special. So on the PS3, we have a Swiss Pikeman unit, which is available in skirmish mode and multiplayer. Um, that's not available anywhere else. And on the 360, we have a Genoese Crossbowman, who's only available um, on the 360. For PC, we have a bonus campaign called The Knight's Tale, which adds some extra gameplay mode as well. So each of the platforms has something special that's unique to them.